And after a Capitol Hill lunch with lawmakers from both sides, a parade fit for a president. Well, as you said, we're live here from the Freedom Ball. The Rockettes were just performing behind us. We're joined now by Congressman and former Real World cast member Sean Duffy of Wisconsin. Congressman, it's great to see you. Good to see you too, Tucker. Thank I, you. I'm not so sure about that real world intro, but thanks, man. Well, the, the reason I said that was I was thinking, so you sort of vaulted into public consciousness from television, as did the new president. That's right. And, and my claim to fame is my wife and I both did reality TV, met on TV, and got married, and were the first reality TV couple in America. Well, your claim to fame is you have eight children. That, that's true, too. You are yes. the envy of parents <laughs> everywhere. So and, what, and, and we brought them to D.C. for this, this great event, this great affair, which, by the way, exhausts their parents. Uh, all eight of them? All eight of them are here, yeah. You're a, you're a brave man. So yeah. what, what jumped out at you uh, from the new president's inaugural Listen, address? I, I would just tell you, he, he was, he's, con, he's consistent with his message. And for me, a yes. Wisconsin guy, uh, that he hasn't lost focus on the forgotten men and women. Yes. We've been trying, I, I was elected in 2010, that historic wave. We've been trying for six years to actually move policy that would focus on uh, the small employers that put our families to work. That's right. And uh, now with Donald Trump, he hasn't forgotten them. He's going to work with us to take the weight of government off our families and our businesses and put power back in the people. And I thought that message was fantastic and delivered in the campaign, but also from the podium today. I've been here since the Reagan administration in Washington and watched pretty carefully, and this seemed a dramatic departure from the economic policy of previous Republican presidents. This was not supply side right. economics. This was not cutting the size of government. This was something very different. This looked to me like populism. Yeah, and, and I think we have to be careful about that as conservatives, but also I, don't, I, I think it's okay that, that Donald Trump say, I'm going to put America first. Uh, when we have families that uh, aren't getting pay, wage, uh, pay raises, yes. uh, they can't find good jobs, uh, that we're spending money overseas, I think it's important we go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to our families and help them out. Why are we helping people in every other corner of the world? And he said, securing borders everywhere else in the world instead of our own. And I think people are ready for this message. Again, we don't want trade wars. We want to make sure we have free-flowing right. trade, but sound trade deals that look out for our people. And I, I got to tell you what, uh, it's heartening to hear it. But he'll be tempered by a little, uh, a little bit in the House by, by uh, the conservatives there. But I'm looking forward to a good partnership with them. I got to tell you, this was exciting for us. I mean, if members of Congress would, uh, could do cartwheels and tumble down the halls of Congress going out uh, for the inauguration, they would have. That's the kind of excitement really? you have. Really? Oh, because, yeah. I mean, I've, I've watched this pretty carefully for the past year, and Republicans in the House were not behind Trump from the beginning. I mean, they weren't. far from it. They far didn't it. like it, him. They were threatened by him. They're scared of his Twitter, as they I are. think they probably still are. You think that their excitement was genuine, and if so, why? Maybe their own fear of his Twitter coming at them could be the That's problem. That's exactly it. Right. No, no I, 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 you saw a gradual movement from the Republican conference. Now, I was, I was there very early, but yes. Republicans came on, and at the end, they were all there. And so you've seen this division in the House. You have the Freedom Caucus. You have traditional conservatives, moderate Republicans. And there's been this division. We fought about what should be the strategy and what's the right policy and how do we, how do we get around Obama to implement our agenda. You see a unified Republican Party willing and ready to work with Donald Trump uh, to implement these policies. Again, fix, fix health care. Let's, let's work on taxes. Let's secure the border. Um, all the big issues he talked about, we are ready to do, and we've been working on for the last six, eight years. But his agenda is so ambitious it is. and so speedy. In the first day, he plans to do more than the Congress has done in the past 10 years. I mean, we'll see if he can do it. In the first 100 days, he, he means to transform a lot of the way the government works. Is the Congress behind all of that, the Republican conference? Well, so, so, so maybe two points. First off, he can do so much by himself because yes. Barack Obama did so much by himself. Obama, by way of executive order, circumventing Congress, and through agencies in the executive branch, imposed great pain on the American people. With his pen and through his agencies, he can roll so much of the Obama agenda back, even without Congress. Uh, but with Wait, that but, said, but are you for that? I mean, you're a member no, of a co-equal no, branch no, no. of government. Don't oh, you think you ought to be making those decisions? Oh, no, no, I do. So I, I'm okay if we're going to roll back the Obama executive order right. and come back to Congress to move an agenda with the Congress that's a co-equal branch of government. Um, but we don't agree with everything. I mean, if, if he wants to spend a trillion dollars on infrastructure, he does. we got to pay for it. And if you think you're going to spend a trillion dollars and put us a trillion dollars more in debt, um, we're not going to go for it. Do we want to build roads and bridges and airports? Yes, we do, and we'll join them. But we've got to figure out a way that we're going to pay for it. With $20 trillion in debt, we're not going to make it 21 on day one on this infrastructure build-out. So let's pay for it, and we'll do it. Really? Because, yeah. I mean, if you were to poll those two questions, I mean, I'm not 
you no, know, question no, your okay. math because I think you're right. But if your poll is two questions, should we spend a trillion dollars improving our infrastructure, better roads, tunnels, bridges, airports, and employ thousands of Americans in so doing, and incur a trillion dollars in debt? I think the majority of Americans on both sides would say, yeah, it's worth it. Well, I, I got to tell you what, from our perspective, Tr Tucker, with, with the $20 trillion, $20 trillion debt, we pay $280 billion here right. just in interest. Obama says that's going to be a trillion dollars in interest in 10 years. This is going to eat us alive. Of course. So we have to be smart about how we do it. So we might be able to repatriate uh, foreign profits, bring those back, uh, tax them at 5, 8, 10 percent. That could bring in two to $400 billion. But we're going to have to make up the rest of it. Um, and again, uh, we are concerned about the debt uh, and the deficits in Congress. So we can partner with them, but he's going to dance with us too. So if you said, without getting too specific about yeah. it, but if you said to the new president, you know, we'd love to build all those beautiful new airports that you're talking about beautiful. in your inaugural, but we can't pay for it, so no. You really think the Congress, the Republican conference within the United States Congress could stand firm against yeah. a public relations assault by the new president? Well, I, th I think uh, Trump wouldn't say now. He said, all right, let's, let's sit down and talk about how we pay for it. Well, there you let's, go. let's put our priorities together. And if this is his priority, we can make it ours too. But then we've got to say, well, what else are we going to give up somewhere else yes. to do this massive build? And I agree. We need to build roads and bridges. And it's cheaper to do it now than to wait uh, five years. It gets more expensive. So I do want to do it, but I do want to pay for it as well. But he's going to find partners with us. There's a lot of things that we want to do uh, that are on the same page. I think Democrats, uh, he's, he's, for the most, he's, he can be a pretty moderate guy. I think Democrats are going to like even this infrastructure build up. Remember the o Obama stimulus bill, $850 right. billion, dollars, which, by the way, if that money had gone to infrastructure, we would, have to, we would have to talk about spending another trillion dollars in infrastructure, but it didn't go there. He spent it on all different kinds of, of things. Of course. So, um, you, but you think that Democrats who are not just mindless reactionary will, partisans could look at the merits of this and say, we, we agree with this. Well, that's a shrinking group right now, Tucker. It is. I've uh, but, I, but I can tell you what, I think, I think they're going to be able to uh, come back and say, what can I work with Mr. Trump on? And by the way, uh, this was uh, re uh, reported earlier in the show. Democrats across America, look at the protests. I just came in uh, to this ball, and there's protesters outside hollering at people with their signs. If that's the Democrat Party, they've left even more of the middle base of America uh, than uh, what took place in this last election. They're gonna, they're gonna, the, America's going to leave the Democrat Party in droves. Sure. If this is who they are, if this is the tactics, engage in the debate, engage in the conversation, well, it, it, and but, win the debate. Don't protest. Don't beat people up. Don't burn cars and smash windows. I mean... That, that's not how you win votes for people. No, except for the rich and the poor who still support them. So I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, since you are a member of the Wisconsin delegation. Yes. As is the Speaker of the House, who basically opposed, not basically, in effect, aggressively opposed Donald Trump. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. For a lot of the way, not for him at all. What is their relationship like now? On television, so, it seems like they have a, a good working relationship. Is so, that real? But first of all, I, I would say Paul was not uh, adamantly opposed to him. They worked together the last couple weeks of the campaign. Paul Ryan was in a weird spot as the Speaker of the House. He had a lot of his own members uh, that were in tough races. Right. Uh, where, listen, in my district, Donald Trump won by 20 points. But there were I some know. districts where Trump was down by 35 points, and we had a Republican there trying to win. So I think uh, Paul was trying to navigate that. Uh, but again, the two of them worked together at the end. I think... Uh, it's an honest relationship. I think they like each other. Good. I think Donald Trump sees that Paul Ryan and his uh, mastery of the budget and policy is going to be very useful to him. And I think Paul Ryan yep. understands that if I want to get these big ideas that I've been working on for over 10 years, I need Donald Trump to buy into those ideas. So you're going to see a great partnership between right. those two working together to make America great again. They need each other. Congressman, Absolutely. thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, thanks, Tucker. Good to see you. you Eight children. Holy smokes. President Trump.